we are with Lennart Utis, who is a specialist in DGT boards, uh, live broadcasting, and also a world-class chess photographer. Hey, chess best in India. So, Lennart, uh, can you tell us what are you doing currently in Tbilisi? Well, <laughs> um, usually I work for chess tournaments. I'm hired as a DGT specialist or as a photographer or something else. Um, but nobody was really interested in uh, hiring me here in Tbilisi, so I thought, let's, let's simply come. I've never been to Georgia before, and I really like knockouts. Um, I've been involved with the Millionaire Chess Tournaments in Las Vegas and Atlantic City, uh, where we had like uh, an open group, and after seven rounds, we made like uh, a knockout out of eight players. And I really like this format. And uh, so I want to see some blood, and that's where I came for, and uh, that will happen today. Uh, Lennart, the thing that everyone sees in chess is that you are either a chess player or a chess, let's say, coach or a chess second. But you have chosen some really distinct fields in chess, which is like photography, live broadcast. Huh? How, how did that happen? Um, I, um, so I'm from the Netherlands and uh, somehow we have a very good chess culture there. Um, we have like a lot of youth, youth events and somehow they asked me to write reports for some youth events. Um, I'm, I'm quite a good chess player myself, not super good, but I'm like 2100 rating. Uh -huh. um, so I wrote some reports and, um, and somehow it developed a little bit more into technical things. They asked me to, uh, to learn a little bit about DGT boards because it was very useful and, uh, and somehow I, uh, there was a market for that to, to broadcast chess online. And uh, I bought my first uh, photo camera, which can also record video. And I worked for Dutch chess website a little bit, Hacksite.nl. Uh, and um, yeah, somehow I rolled into it. And um, I started to work for some big chess tournaments in the Netherlands, like Baikanzee. Um, and then somehow like international events came up. And uh, after support from the chess, clubs, uh, chess club and scholastic center in St. Louis, I started to... Uh, to do stuff for the US chess, US chess Championships and the Sinkfield Cups and yeah, and, and somehow I could make a living out of it. And uh, so right now these are the things that you do and make a living? Yeah, I'm a full-time uh, professional in chess. Wow, and uh, you are best known, I at least to me and to other Indian people as a photographer. How did that skill, uh, I mean you, you kind of developed it on your own, right? Without any mm -hmm. training from others? Yeah, so I had my camera and I had a lot of spare times during chess tournaments. Uh, I was running some DGT boards during events, which doesn't really fulfill my time that much. Um, so with my camera I tried to take some photos and um, I... I looked up a lot of like training videos uh, on YouTube and on lynda.com and stuff and uh, I learned how to post-process photos, how to edit them and um, that was kind of really interesting to me. I like to play around on my computer and there are like sliders of like more contrast, less contrast and I, I really like to play with that and, um, and somehow I developed like a little bit of uh, yeah, interest in photography um, and now I'm, um, I'm trying to get as close with my camera on chess players as possible. Wonderful. And Leonard, is it true that you are actually do not have a home? That means you are traveling all the time throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I, I was counting actually. Like I think I'm involved with like 25 chess tournaments a year. Um, so that's, that's a lot. <laughs> so I travel from one event to the other. So I just, before this, I was in Ashgabat, Turkmenistan, to help them to prepare for the Asian Indoor Games. Um, after this, I have one week off, uh, which I will spend some time at the office of New in Chess magazine. Um, after that, I go to Isle of Man. So I, I simply hop, hop off to, um, yeah, to the next event. Um, so I basically don't need a place to live. And um, of course, there's like some support from my parents. Like I have all my stuff stored at their location. If I'm in the Netherlands for a couple of days, I can stay there. Uh, but basically, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm traveling nonstop. So homesickness is a term that you are unaware of. No, but like if you drink bad water in uh, Georgia, you can get some sickness now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what, what are your next uh, plans now uh, apart from this? What are you going to do? Well, there, there's one thing that I really like to do. Um, I, I really like to, to bring chess more to, to the public or to gain more interest in chess. So I really want to overthink like what is a good chess broadcast? Um, is it like a live broadcast or like is it like a summary of an event in, in like half an hour or like what should we do to, to gain more interest in chess? 
and because I'm so busy during events, I don't have time to think about it, to how to improve chess broadcasts. And that's actually what I want to do. Um, and I think I have some spare time in November, so uh, hopefully I can, uh, yeah, think a little bit about it. And well, what do you think about uh, the field of chess photography? Is it like growing? What is the future of it? Um, well, I'm super excited, first of all, about David uh, Yada's book, The Thinkers, uh, that's coming out in a month from now, uh, published by Quality Chess. Um, I'm really looking forward to, um, yeah, to see like what kind of like portraits he has and like how he thinks that a good chess book should uh, look like. Um, and of course, it's it's great that like a lot of people are able to buy uh, a good camera and play around with it and. For example, right now there's like the uh, uh, European Youth Championships in Romania, and there are some good photographers there. So it's it's good that there are more people taking uh, photos and trying to improve their skills. And last question, Lennart, about your hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you choose the color? <laughs> um, so basically, I've had every color in the rainbow. Um, when I was young, my hair was like ginger color, like red and it was beautiful and somehow it faded to like a little bit more dark I lost a lot of color in my hair and um, and then somehow I decided to uh, to start to dye my hair in weird colors I've had every color so far and um, Anish does not disturb me right now anyway <laughs> um, so uh, I had every color so far and um, so now it's completely random I, um, I buy some hair dye in a shop and I simply do it myself and um, and if it's not the right color, it's not the right color. I don't I don't really mind anymore. But I have the feeling that right now it's some kind of like a trademark. So uh, yeah, let's. Um, let's so you keep don't have a, dying on. have a favorite color for yourself? No. <laughs> Anything is fine. Yeah, as long <laughs> as it's colorful. Well, thanks, Leonard, and we really like your colorful life, and we hope that you keep living it that way. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs>